ready, ready. Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Thursday, the 28th of Menachem Ab, corresponding to August 29th, the Lighthouse Torah Project live video feed sponsored Le'ilui Nishmat Devorah Feige Bat Shemuel, Ora Devorah Bat Shemuel, Le'a Bat Yosef, and Esther Rivka Bat Avraham. Additionally, for the Refua Shelema, Spirit Recovery of Menachem Mendel Ben Sarah Basha and Hannah Batshani. The itorah.com live audio recording sponsored for the Shiduchim of Nehamadina Bat Hanabatia, Eliyahu Haim Ben Esther, Rachel Penina Bat Jenny, and Sarah Simha Bat Sophie. We begin the class by wishing a hearty Mazel Tov to the Shachtel and the Cochen family for the birth of the baby girl that we had the naming a few moments ago. This is going live in Facebook and YouTube later, I believe. Yes, so by Ezat Hashem, we acknowledge the presence of the Abiyah Bat and the family. May the daughter be a source of joy and pride for the family, for the community, and Am Israel. Amen. Amen. As we know very well, this Shabbat and Sunday will be, by Ezat Hashem, Rosh Chodesh Elul Hava Alenu Letova, and Selichot scheduled for Monday morning, by Ezat Hashem. The, and the opening day also of the Ezra Franco Sephardi Kolel at the Edmond J. Safra Synagogue. So, Be'ezat Hashem, we keep the kahal, the kahal posted of all the upcoming events and programs connected to the Kolel and the Synagogue. We know that many people and viewers may be concerned about the inclement weather heading our way. We hope and pray to Borei Olam that Be'ezat Hashem uh, is a false alarm, although halachically a person must take the proper preparations and precautions, but even following the current pattern, it may pay us a visit Sunday night, Monday morning, but Be'ezat Hashem, the Pasuk says, Teshu'at Hashem ke'eref ein, the Hashem's salvation, Hashem's redemption, comes like the blink of an eye. So, Be'ezat Hashem, we pray to Borei Olam that it should only be a temporary uh, situation that moves far away from mankind. And whatever this uh, hurricane, Dorian, pays a visit, Be'ezat Hashem, that it should not cause any harm or any damages to people. Amen. But someone asked me in the early Minyan, are hurricanes guided by Hashem? Are hurricanes guided by God or not? So interesting enough, the answer is very simple. The short answer is yes. Why? Oh, I shouldn't say why, but where do we learn that from? It's actually a verse in the book of Tehillim that we recite every day of our life. The Pasuk says, Esh ubarad shelek bekitor ruach seara osa devaro. This is from the Hallelujah towards the end of the book of Tehillim. I think that is chapter uh, 148, I believe. And it says as follows. Esh Ubarad, or 147. Esh Ubarad, fire and hail, sheleg, snow, vekitor, and volcanoes, ruach se'ara, hurricanes, osa devaro. They fulfill the will of Akadosh Baruch Hu. For those who may not live in America or in Miami, hurricanes go according to the ABC. So the fact that we are in September almost, and we only are by number, by the letter D, that means that Baruch Hashem, it was a very peaceful and very calm hurricane season. For those that were here in uh, September 2017, Right? We had Hurricane Wilma. So it means that we were, by early September, by the W. So make the calculations how many names were given in 2017 and how low we are in 2019. So by Ezat Hashem, if the intention of sending a hurricane uh, is a wake-up call, because at the end of the day, if you look at the pattern of the hurricane, it looks literally like a shofar. 
That's how it goes. That's how the hurricane is drawn in the weather channel. This is how the hurricane is drawn. I'm not exaggerating. Open your phone, go to the weather channel, that come, weather, and you see this going on. Now, on this shape, there is a shi'ur by the Benishai that explains the concept and the shape of the shofar. Let's do a shofar, which is not much different what I did, but let's do This is how a shofar give or take looks. Perhaps it's bended a bit more, a bit less, but the Benishai explains, and this will be the opening statement of today's class, that first of all, what is the meaning of the word shofar? Shofar, it says the Benishai, comes from the word lehishtaper. Lehishtaper in English means what? To improve. Mejorar in Spanish. So the word shofar is a reminder, I need to improve my actions, my behavior, etc. But interesting enough, the Benishai explains, the mouth of the shofar, it's very small, very narrow. And the other extreme is very wide and open. What is the meaning of this shape? So the Benishai explains that this represents the pathway of Teshuvah, that a person begins in a very small baby step of Teshuvah, as we learned this two days ago, and gradually the person has become more solid and strong with the Teshuvah. The Teshuvah of the person enables the person to grow in a spiritual way and the sounds of the Shofar. Thank you so much. Many communities in the world have the tradition of blowing the shofar during Selichot. It is not our tradition of the Syrian community here and up north to blow the shofar during Selichot, but I do know for a fact that there are many Sephardi communities that blow the shofar during Selichot. Allahically, there is no obligation to do so, but perhaps the reason why they do it is to start warming up to the upcoming season of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. We know that in the Ashkenazi community, I don't believe that they blow the shofar during Selichot, but they blow the shofar, right, at the end of each day of Shaharit prayer during the weekdays. So whichever custom or tradition a person follows, Obviously, the whole idea of the shofar, the pasuk says, Uru yeshenim mitardumatchem. What does it mean? The shofar, it's like a wake-up call to the person to remind themselves that we are getting ready to meet the Creator in the sense of the idea of Hashem looking at us, looking at our account, looking at our life, and seeing how was your year, what did you do? What did you accomplish? What did you improve? And based on that, we go to the next year coming up, Be'ezat Hashem. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam shehakol nihiyya bitbaro. Before we go to the Zohar of today, I'd like to discuss very briefly a message of the Gemara of today, the Gemara from Masechet Bechorot. Bechorot is the loss of the firstborn. If it's a human firstborn or an animal firstborn, as the Pasuk says, Kadeshli kol Bechor, Peter kol Rechem bivne Israel, ba Adam uba Behema li hu. This is a verse that is found in our Tefillin, the first perasha of the Tefillin. The second verse is, Sanctify for me all the firstborn among the Jewish people, ba Adam uba behema, in the humans and in the firstborn animal. And this is Kadeshli kol Bechor. This is how our Hazanim begin tefillah shaharit. Now, to be a Bechor, to be a firstborn, 
It's something that happens in a family that the mother, through natural causes, meaning to say no C-section, gave birth to a baby boy. And the reason is that from the Torah, specifically when husband and wife are Israel, meaning to say no, either one of them is a Kohen or a Levi. If they are Kohen or Levi, there is no Mizvah. But if both parents are Israel, then they have to do the Mizvah of Pidyon Haben. And Pidyon Haben has a lot of messages. Pidyon Haben has a lot of components to the Mizvah. Number one, if you ever attended a Pidyon Haben ceremony, the opening ceremony part, part of the ceremony of Pidyon Haben is a question and answer session between the Kohen and the mother of the child and then the father of the child. And the Mizvah of the Torah is that we redeem the child with the value of five silver coins from the Torah. The Hida explains that every time that a Jewish couple fulfills the mitzvah of redeeming their firstborn son, it causes two things. A, besides fulfilling a mitzvah ta'aseh from the Torah, but number one, it says the Hida, reminds HaKadosh Baruch Hu the importance and the need to redeem the Jewish people. And your question will be, God needs a reminder? Hashem doesn't need reminders. We need reminders. How many times we remind ourselves on the cell phone, I have an appointment, I have a trip, I have a meeting. So for humans that we can't forget, we need to remember. But why did Hashem need to be reminder to re to reminded to redeem the Jewish people. So the short answer is that I don't believe that the mission statement is to remind Hashem, but to let Hashem know that we are aware that we are in exile. And that's part of the emunah in Mashiach's arrival. And that's why our hachamim encourage every one of us that when it comes to certain berachot of the Amidah, to pray for Mashiach to come. There are many blessings in the Amidah that talk about Mashiach's arrival. If I can have the Sidur quickly. Thank you so much. The first beracha is in the beginning of the Amidah that says, Mehaye Metim. Melech memit um haye um asmiyah yeshua. Before that, the Pasuk says in the Amida, um evigo el livne benehem. Another one is um moshia um again. Another one is me haye metim ata. So all these words, I did not explain them, but all of them have one common denominator. Mashiach's arrival and resurrection. And then we repeat again. Beneeman atalia hayot metim, baruch ata Hashem mehaye hametim. So, in a matter of one page of the Amida, we already have five, six times the topic of resurrection, which is one of the principles of faith of Judaism, as we have the Yod Gimal Ikarim of the Emunah. And next to the belief of resurrection is the belief of Mashiach's arrival for Am Israel. Then we come to our personal uh, prayers, and then we say in the third, on the fourth beracha of the Bakashot, Umaher lega olenu geula shelema. Spirily, send Mashiach, Goel Israel. The next one also, the next one is. In this prayer, and I apologizing for the audience if I'm not explaining word by word, 
because the purpose today is not going word by word, but just to highlight how many times we are asking for the olam, bring the redemption. And it says, blow of the great shofar for our redemption and gather us from the four corners of the world. We have a tradition. What will change between now and Mashiach's survival? What's going to be different between now and Mashiach's survival? I have some good news to tell you, as the song says. Mashiach is on the way. Some of you may know this song. I have some good news to tell you. Mashiach is on his way. Okay? Chazak Baruch. It says the Rambam, a simple statement, but I think that for better understanding... I'm going to expand for a few moments because at the end of the day, Pidion Haben means the redemption, the rescuing of a son. Mashiach's arrival is Hashem rescuing Am Israel from the dangers of Galut. And the Pasuk says, Beni, Bechori, Israel. Am Israel are considered, so to speak, the firstborn of Borei Olam, Kav Yachod. So Mashi, the Rambam says, somebody's there, please, behind you. Yes, thank you. The Pasuk says in the Rambam, towards the end, Olam ke minhago holech. The world continues its natural course. Meaning to say, we're going to have to eat, we're going to have to get dressed, we're going to have to live, and to work, I'm not sure if we're going to handle money when Mashiach comes. It's going to be all cryptocurrencies. We don't know that, how it's going to happen. I don't know that. Nobody knows that, the Rambam says. The Rambam says it is impossible to really know how things are going to be when Mashiach comes. Because it's all about, Be'ezat Hashem, the future of Am Israel. But one thing is for sure, that in the beginning... Everything will remain as of now with some differences. The differences will be in the quality of life of mankind. And when I mean quality of life, I'm not referring to luxury and lifestyle. I'm referring that everyone will be able to live a much more peaceful and calm and happy life. Can you imagine that? We cannot. Because we live a very stressful life. Some of us more, some of us less. But if we are humans, we encounter challenges in life. We encounter adverse situations in life. We sometimes need to handle and learn how to handle anger problems, how to handle or how to ignore arguments, fights, animosity, hatred, jealousy, competition, all these words that I just put on the table today, Be'ezat Hashem, when Mashiach comes, will disappear. Because all these words have the same father and mother known as the Yeserara. And the Talmud tells us that one of the things that will change when Mashiach come will be, look at the Yeserara as the, a creation that has a battery that lasts for a very long time. So how do you stop this machine of functioning? Remove the battery. So the Gemara says, but the Olam will take care of the Yeserara. And that's why the Rambam brings the Pasuk from the Aftarah that says, Begam ze'ev im keves, the lamb will dwell with the wolf, which these two animals today are the opposite. Usually a lamb sees a wolf, the lamb runs away. And the wolf sees the lamb and runs after him, after the animal. Meaning to say that we talk about two types of animals. One that is very aggressive and very salvaje, as they say. 
and another animal that represents completely the opposite. So the Rambam quotes the Pasuk from the Aftarah that says that the calmness and the goodness, right, that the calmness and the goodness that will affect mankind, it will have a direct domino effect in the animal kingdom. And that is one of the reasons why we can say that many animals can, we cannot eat according to the Torah. And if you look on the list of animals that we cannot eat, are usually the carnivorous, wild, aggressive types of animals. We'll continue with the Beracha, uh, and we say, Umloha Alenu, and Hashem, we want you to be a, a, a king of or us, Behesed, with kindness, with compassion, with righteousness, etc. Another Beracha, another Beracha, Tishkom Betoch Yerushalayim Eircha, Bone Yerushalayim, Etzemach David Avdecha, etc. All these <coughs> paragraphs of the Amidah that I'm going very fast, all of them is asking Bore Olam, bring the salvation for Am Israel. That's why our rabbis tell us that in these two blessings that I just read, Tishkom Betoch Yerushalayim Eircha, dwell in the city of Jerusalem. And the next beracha, Etzemach David Avdecha, the person will make the effort, should make the effort of having the kavanah, Bore Olam, send the salvation and the redemption for all of Am Israel. Continues. And then we have the concept of modim. Modim is the blessing that we all know very well that has to do with expressing gratitude to Hashem. A person being thankful to Hashem for everything that happens in a person's life. So powerful is this prayer that we know very well that whenever the Chazan does the repetition of the Amida, the mission of the Kahal, of the congregation, is to listen, obviously, not to speak, and not to talk, and not to read, but to listen to the repetition. And the Benishai explains that although the repetition of the Amidah was originally established for those who did not know how to read, will be able to at least listen to the prayer. Nowadays, thank God, we have books in all languages, with phonetics that we don't need it. But it says the Benish Hai that from a Kabbalistic perspective, the repetition of the Amidah that we listen every time in our daily prayers as well as Shabbat and holidays, it gives the final touch that our silent prayer receives the final delivery system directly to Hashem. So what is the Benish Hai saying? That our prayer reaches a certain level, the Hazara, the repetition, gives the final push. But this is only required in the men's prayers. The ladies, by their own zehut, their prayers arrive to the final destination. In other words, they don't need Hazara, the ladies. The Hazara is the need for a man, like Friday night prayers. After Kiddush, after Shalom Aleichem, what do we say Friday night? Eshet Hail. We praise the wife. There is no prayer praising the husband. You ever thought of that? I know you want to write it. But it will not be put in the Siddur. Because the wife is the foundation of the home. That's it. Let's continue. In the Modim, in every blessing, in every Beracha of the Hazara, of the repetition by the Hazan, we say, Baruchu Baruch Shemo, Amen. This is it. One exception. The prayer of Modim. The prayer of Modim is the prayer of gratitude. Our rabbis establish a full paragraph to be recited 
after we answer the modim from the Hazan's prayer. And we basically say the same thing. We give blessings and gratitude to the Almighty for giving us the opportunity of being alive and being alive and well. So give us the merit of remaining alive and gather us from the four corners of the world, Lehatzrot Kochecha, to your holy yard, courtyard, that means Beta Mikdash in Jerusalem, Lishmor Hukecha Belaasot Resonecha. Why we want Mashiach to come? Why people want Mashiach to come? I'm sure that every one of us has their own reason and their own interest. And I'm not against why do you want Mashiach to come. But I'm going to concentrate today. What is the collective benefit of Mashiach's coming? I started to speak about it a few moments ago. And one of the benefits is peace in the world. Peace among mankind. Can you imagine that you don't fight with anyone? Can you imagine that nothing bothers us in a good way? Meaning to say we become easygoing people. We learn how to be mevater. We learn how to let things go. And we don't have an impulsive reaction. But we have a positive collective reaction. And if we see someone that has something nicer or something special, we feel and sense a true happiness for them instead of asking ourselves, I need to have it, or why him and not me? I know that what I'm saying today, says Rabbi, if, how can you expect that to happen with the status of the world? Today, the world is a very consuming generation. We spend money left and right, in the olden days, you needed to go to a store to buy and to spend money. Today, you don't have to leave your home. Stay in pajamas all day, and you can spend a lot of money. Right? So the dangers of financial disasters are much greater today than maybe 10 years ago. Also, animosity from nations... We have hiccups going on in Israel these days. Syria, Iran, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon. Lebanon. All these things are, 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 are not a simple thing to ignore. So when Mashiach comes, we're going to have, God willing, sooner or later, this beautiful lifestyle of peace, harmony, love, no more illnesses. That's a guaranteed benefit from Mashiach's arrival. Death will be abolished. No more tears. Can you imagine? No more tears. People cry. Why people cry? Out of pain, suffering, sadness, etc. What are tears? Tears is a bitter fluid that comes from the eyes of the person. You ever tasted tears? Salty. Hazaku Baruch. Salty. Instead of sweet. The Pasuk says, Umaha Hashem Dima Me'al Kol Panim. God will wipe away the tears of every face. I can say, I believe, that tears is the outpouring or overflowing of stress in the life of a person. Guess what? When Mashiach comes, stress will disappear. Be'aser mimenu, sara, yagon, ba'anaha. Remove from us sara, suffering, anguish, and stress. Or sighing. Ah, uli, oy vey. All these verbal noises and words that we say, and they all mean the same. A headache. Comes the tefillah and it says, Bete esov galuyotenu lehatsrot kochecha. God give us the zechut of being from those 
that are gathered from the four corners of the world to Jerusalem. For what purpose? Lishmor hukecha asot resonecha. We want to be close to you. We want to be your true followers. Ulobdecha belevav shalem. And to serve you without any doubts, without any hesitation, hesitation, or without compromising any aspect of our spiritual life, al she'anachnu modim lach, in which we are again thankful to you, baruch kel ha'odaot. Blessed be the Almighty of gratitude and kindness, etc. And then we continue with the final part of the prayer. So every time the Hida says that we fulfill the mitzvah of Pidyon Ben, we are sending a reminder to Hashem, God, we are in Galut. And the question was asked a few moments ago. God needs a reminder? Obviously Hashem doesn't need a reminder. Why? Because reminder is necessary only of the possibility that a person comes to forget. And we're going to say in the prayers of the high holidays, Ki en shiha lifne hiseke vodecha. There is no forgetfulness by God. Ki zoher kol anishkahot atta. God remembers everything that we forgot. Forgetfulness is a human trait. Now, forgetfulness, is it good or not good? Depends. One of the reasons why Hashem created the forgetfulness in the life of the person is for the person to have the power and the strength to overcome personal tragedies. And to forgive and to forgive, to forget. Obviously, to forget things sometimes is good. A person forgets about an unpleasant moment, or a person forgets that had an altercation or an argument with someone, you move on in life. That's beautiful. But I ask you a question Can you afford to forget your wife's birthday? birthday? Can you afford to forget your wedding anniversary? You better not. You may afford to forget that one, but I don't think that it's a good recipe. Obviously, there are certain things in life that we cannot forget. And I brought marriage and birthdays because it's a common, happy, pleasant a reminder. Usually, you know, somebody commented me on a class that I gave a few weeks ago, and I wasn't happy with the reaction of this fellow. And he said to me via email, if you would have known, if you know my wife, you will not think like that. So I wasn't happy, I'm sorry to the wonderful ladies, I wasn't happy that someone can think this way about their own marriage, ne in a negative way. Shalom, because we have a rule in the topic of Shalom Bayit. Whenever there are hiccups or situations between husband and wife, the worst thing that a spouse can do is to blame the other spouse. We all know this for years, talking about this topic and learning Begana Shalom and many other books of Shalom Bayit. The blaming game is not a real good way of solving situations in life. And where do we learn this from? Actually, from the Selichot. We say, lo yasliach, ve'ozev A person, mechasepeshaav means a person that covers their shortcoming. What does it mean? It's not my fault, it's his fault. Is her fault? Is the weather fault? Is the my mother-in-law's fault? Is the wife's fault? Are the kids' fault? Yeah, the person always points a finger and fails to say, you know what? 
I made a mistake, I will avoid it in the future. And that is the meaning of the second part of the sentences. ve'ozev, And a person who recognizes their shortcomings, ve'ozev, and takes an effort to change, Yeruham, Hashem will open the faucet of mercy on the person. And I want you to know, this pasuk, although is about selichot and about the sins and transgressions that a person may do through life, but I want you to have this pasuk in your brain when it comes to challenges in our private and personal life. Before I go further, we have a few more minutes, if you don't mind. I'll keep it short. Maybe five more minutes. Is that Hashem? The Hida adds one more benefit when we fulfill the Mizvah of Pidyon Haben. It says the Hida that whenever the Jewish people redeems their child, is also atoning for the cell of Yosef Hasadik. Remember, Yosef Hasadik was sold by his brothers. How much was the amount of money that Yosef was sold for? Five selaim, like the pidyon haben, meaning to say, the amount of value of a pidyon haben was the amount of value of the selling of Yosef. So every time we fulfill this mitzvah, we are metaken, the Hida says, we are repairing the sin of selling Yosef as a slave. How many years ago did the sale of Yosef took place? At least 35, 3600 years ago for sure. Okay? For sure 3600. Give or take. We left Egypt 3300 and change years ago. We were in Egypt 210, that's already 35 and change. Plus, Yosef Asadik was sold at the age of 17, and he died at the age of 110. Add to that another 80-some years, or 90-some years. So we're talking about over 3,600 years ago, Yosef was sold as a slave. Till today, we still have a mortgage plan, a payment plan. Every time we do the Mizvah of Pidyon Ben. Thank you for your monthly payment. Thank you for your promptly payment. So what do we understand from this? That even though this was something that happened so long ago, the aspect of suffering, meaning to say the suffering of Yosef and the suffering of Yaakov. You know, we usually talk about the suffering of Yosef as a dick. But what about the suffering of Yaakov Avinu? For 22 years, he was mourning the passing of Yosef or the disappearance of Yosef. And why do I say 22 years of suffering? Because, as I said before, and I'm going to repeat it one more time just in case I didn't say it clearly, that one of the reasons why forgetfulness exist is to enable the person to continue living after the passing of a relative. How much people, God forbid, right? How many times people, there are different ways of handling the passing of a relative. I'm telling you as a rabbi, that regretfully, I don't do only weddings. We deal also with, God forbid, lo aleno ve lo alechem, situations of this magnitude. And through the years, we see different ways of how people handle the situation. And I'm not talking about the Shiva, the week of the Shiva, but what happens after, after the week of the Shiva, after the Shiloshim, after the 30 days, and there are people 
that even after the 30 days, they don't see themselves back to life. Meaning to say they are alive, but they have this thought and this bond, right? And I, I was approached with a situation of this nature. Somebody that lost the mother six years already, and still he's mourning the passing of the mother. Literally. Mourning in many ways. And God forbid, for the record, we are not minimizing the emotional pain of a person, but we need to know that one of the reasons why being forgetful exists is so when the person finishes the year of Avelut, gradually the person can continue living. And that's why after the 12th month, there is no Kaddish. After the 12th month, the person can go to a wedding, the person can listen to music, the person can buy new fruits. A lot of the things of Shehiyanu blessing, that's what I meant to say, so we understand that a lot of prohibitions become activated during the year of mourning, Hasvi Shalom, but once the year of Avelut is over, things slowly resume to the previous way. But I'd like to conclude with one more concept, that the fact that Hashem does not forget anything is a given. But guess what? Sometimes to receive something, we need to ask for it. You follow me? It's like you work for a company, right? And you say to yourself, oh, probably they see how good I work. Probably they see how dedicated I am. I ask you a question. Is that a guaranteed bonus or salary increase? Or promotion? Let's be honest. And I have a lot of businessmen around me. All of you are shaking the head. Meaning to say, it really doesn't happen. Unless it was discussed. Unless an arrangement was made in advance. If you do sales from this to this, you get X percentage. If you do more, we'll give you more, etc. But 98% of the time... The person needs to ask for the raise, correct? And the person needs to ask for that special bonus and recognition. Now, I don't understand. Don't the company knows that you were entitled to it? Or you're supposed to get it? But you know what? We all do the same thing. We all ask. And that's exactly what we are referring to. It says the reason why we pray for Hashem, send the Geula, send the redemption, bring peace and harmony to the world, which is important to know, Kahal Kadosh and audience, that Mashiach's survival is not a benefit available to the Jewish people only. It's not like a, a locks and bagels or chicken soup, or matzo ball soup. That's a usual, typical Jewish food. Chopped liver also. Yes. Or kibbe, or whatever it may be. Mashiach survival. Chicken liver, thank you. Mashiach survival, it is something that is going to benefit the entire world. Everybody. Jews and females. Male and females, that's what I meant to say. Old and young. Jew and Gentile will have the benefit of living a peace, a life full of peace, full of harmony, full of love. And we say hello to the visions from the, the students from Israel, from uh, Tampa, Florida, Austin, Texas, Colorado. Baruch Hashem. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So Rabotai. I'm reaching my, my goal today of the class. So, Be'ezat Hashem, pray that God willing, not only the hurricane, 
dissipates and doesn't cause any more damage to any place that is visiting. And Be'ezat Hashem will reinforce in our daily prayers, praying to Borei Olam to bring peace and harmony and the redemption to the entire world. And it's fascinating how from one mitzvah, Pidion Haben, from redeeming a firstborn son, we are already talking about the redemption of Am Israel. May it be speedily in our days. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. And Chodesh Tov, reminder that Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh Shelul will be Shabbat and Sunday. Be'ezat Hashem. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen. Rabbi Hananiah ben Akashia Omer, Ratza Kadosh Baruch Hu lezakot et Israel lefichach. Hirba lahem Torah mizvot shenehemar. Adonai hafez leman sitko. Yagdil Torah ve'yadir. Kaddish. Amen. 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 Amen.